When it comes to working with databases, inside of your Next.js project, there's a new cool kid on the block, and his name is Drizzle ORM. Not only have myself and Theo had a great experience trying it out, after this video, you will have to, or else. And using Drizzle for your own projects has just become so much easier. But why would you want to use Drizzle when there's Prisma, an amazing alternative, battle-tested with an unmatched developer experience? To answer that, meet Dan, one of the three members of the Drizzle team. You can only do what Prisma allows you to do, basically what, what they implemented. And if you need to do anything else, you just uh, resort to raw SQL without any type safety, which is error prone and hard to write, hard to maintain, etc. So two very important takeaways. Drizzle is meant for a specific language. It's not meant for beginners that don't understand SQL. If you don't want to bother learning a database language like SQL, go with Prisma. But if you really want to benefit from the specific database dialect, Postgres, SQL, SQLite, whatever it might be, use Drizzle, because with Drizzle, you can. And that ties in so well with the second point, performance. It's a huge one. Not only is Drizzle compared to Prisma edge compatible, but it's also way more performant in how you use it. You see how Prisma works is it's got a massive Rust binary engine. And when you want to do a join in SQL, it goes ahead and literally fetches every table that you're joining, mashes them together in its Rust binary engine, and then giving you the result. That is not only super in performant, but it's also expensive because you mostly pay your database based on how many reds are done. And with Prisma, a lot of reads are done. Drizzle, on the other hand, sends one query to your database. It's optimized for performance and it's also cheaper. And as a bonus, you can prepare your queries. If you don't know what that means, when you call a serverless function like Next.js, these are considered warm for like 15 minutes about. That means the underlying infrastructure, wherever your function is hosted, like on AWS, is spun up, and then it's ready to serve requests for about 15 minutes. While that serverless function is warm and you've prepared your query at the very top, whenever a new query comes in, SQL does need to recalculate how the query string is concatenated, leading in fast results again while that function is warm. So you benefit from the edge, from faster queries and from more optimized queries and that's pretty impressive. Now the interesting question is how can you use Drizzle for those benefits? Let's talk how it's done conceptually and then I'm gonna give you a tip on how you can get set up with Drizzle in like five seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, but mostly like 99% gentlemen. Unfortunately, I should have gotten into horses or something. Anyways, um, there are three steps to setting up Drizzle ORM. First one is to write your schema. And you know this step. You know this from Prisma. It's nothing different. And if we take a look at the code, this is what it looks like, your actual schema. You might notice there are syntactical differences. Yes, you write them in TypeScript instead of in a Prisma custom syntax. And the cool thing is, if you know SQL, you know Drizzle. This is SQL syntax ID with a serial ID and so on. And the important thing is, depending on which dialect of database you're using, so SQL or Postgres or whatever, the syntax changes. You've also got that in Prisma, at least to some degree, and in Drizzle, it's the same to benefit from the dialect that you're using. Now, this user example is very simple. We've got an ID, a full name and a phone number. And let's say we wanted to extend this schema. How would we do that in this syntax? So for example, we wanted to add a post for each user, for example, a blog where everybody could post whatever. First off, we would want to import the integer. And then secondly, we can get started in writing out the actual schema, just as a very basic example so you understand how this works. Let's export a post constant that is a MySQL table. If you're in Postgres, that would be a Postgres table and so on. And then the actual schema right here is declared as nothing more than a JavaScript or TypeScript object. Very, very handy. For example, let's add an ID as a primary key on this table, a title that is of type text, and then also a likes amount that is just an integer to keep things basic. And then lastly, we want a user ID. Now, because we're using planet scale under the hood as the serverless MySQL database, we can't reference the user because planet scale specifically with their VTES architecture does not allow foreign keys, but this works just fine. 
And this is how we write our schema. That's step one done. You see, it's actually pretty simple. And then let's get started with step two, and that is creating migrations. Oh, by the way, you're gonna see why I added this code block here in a hot second. And let's get started with migrations. And migrations are nothing more than SQL files that are generated for us. And I made a very handy migration command, that is migrations generate that we can simply put into our CLI. So let's say yarn or npx migrations colon generate. And as you can see, your SQL migration file has been, you know, generated successfully. It doesn't say that, but we can see we have two tables, the post and the user table. Essentially, these SQL files that we have just generated are generated from our schema. So every table that we have defined in our schema.ts is now put as a migration file right here is an actual SQL file into our migrations folder, where we have the post and the user and the actual SQL commands to create those tables. Now, how does Drizzle know to put them in here? And this is where the Drizzle config comes in, where we define our schema, and then also where the finished migrations will go, in my case, the source migrations folder, and then also a connection string to our database. Awesome, so we've got our SQL migration files generated for us. That is step two done. We have written our schema, we've created our migrations, and now the last step is also the most fun, and that is pushing the migrations into the database. So how do we do that? How do we get these local files, these SQL files into planet scale? And guess what? I've also done a command for that. And that is migrations push. Very, very simple CLI command we can use. Yarn migrations colon push. Hit enter and that's gonna push or local files into our database. And if we take a look at the actual planet scale database right here, we can see there's three tables. One is internal for Drizzle, that's totally fine. And then we have what we created in our schema. That is the post right here. And then that's also the user, both of which we have created ourselves. How awesome is that? This was super easy. And now what we can do is go into our page.tsx and actually start working with this database. So take a look at the very simple example I've prepared right here. On the main page, we are fetching all the users from a database. And then when we press a certain button right here, the form is going to get submitted and through a server action, which is new in Next.js 13.4, we are creating an entry in our database right here. We insert a into the user's table with the values of name Lord Farquad and the phone number of 12345. Let's see how that looks in practice. I've had to make the code a bit smaller, but I hope that's fine. And the most important thing is right here on the right hand side anyways. Check this out. When we load the page, the users are fetched from the database. I've already created two. And then I, when I press create user, this function, the create user is going to get run and insert a new entry in our database. And if we take a look at the console, let me zoom in so you can see this a bit easier. We can see there's a result and the time it took to actually insert that user into our database. Awesome, so we know this was successful. And now if we refresh the page once again, we should be able to see there's a third Lord Farquaad and the ID, even though we're not passing it directly, in this function right here, we're not passing any ID, it is automatically incremented for us. So it turns out I've done a planet scale drizzle starter kit on GitHub. It's in the description, you can try it out. And what it does is it provides you all the tools you need to get set up with drizzle right away. This is not sponsored or anything. I just genuinely found the setup very tedious. So I thought I'm gonna do it so you don't have to do it. And if I want to use Drizzle in the future, I don't have to do it again either. Drizzle is really fun to work with. Try it out, try it on the edge. Try how to perform queries just like you do with Prisma because the syntax is if you use relational queries, very similar. By the way, the code you just saw in that walkthrough was a basic draft. I've since then optimized it. Now it's fully edge compatible so that you can get all the performance benefits out of Drizzle. It would mean a lot if you start the repo and then I wish you a lot of fun playing around with Drizzle and seeing how it works for yourself. That's it for me. I really hope you enjoyed the video and then I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.